Hi, I'm Megan. And I'm Sarah. We're two moms with eight kids between us from preschool to teen. This is the show where we help you feel better about the mom you are and share our own parenting tips and personal stories. We're not experts. We're parents who've been there. We're not perfect. We're real. Welcome to the Mom Hour. Hey, everyone, and welcome to episode 92 of the Mom Hour. I'm Megan Francis, here as always with Sarah Powers, and today we're talking about milestones. Specifically, we're going to talk about how to kind of keep those memories and milestones organized and recorded, and also we're going to talk about how to use milestones as a basis for the way you play with your baby or toddler. We're really excited to introduce you to our sponsor, We School. That's W-E-E, School. Uh, We School is an app that helps you track your baby's development through 117 key milestones, But it also suggests play that dovetails with where your child is developmentally, which is really cool and different. We School is the brainchild of Julie Clark, who you might remember is the founder of the Baby Einstein series, which was hugely popular in my house when my kids were smaller. Um, And it's, it's just a really cool app that we're excited to bring to you today. It really does pair the research on child development with the way that we play with our babies naturally, singing and music and bouncing them on our laps and all of that, but just kind of combines those two into some helpful suggestions that come through the app with some other really cool features, um, like you said, Megan, about tracking those milestones when your baby meets them, taking a photo, capturing a video and having it all in one place in the app. Which is also very cool for those of us who are organizationally challenged. So <laughs> first, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes or so, we're going to be talking kind of about that idea in general, is how, how we keep those memories, how we, you know, like I've said before on this podcast and in writing, you won't just remember everything. No, like, think you think you are You think you're never going to forget that baby's first smile, but... You will. (laughs) So like capturing it is very important. And, and this, I like that this app helps you do that. Um, And then after that, we're going to kind of get into a more general conversation just about milestones in general. We both have a few picked out that we want to talk about that we think are maybe like what lesser, the lesser, lesser, some quirkier, quirkier ones, quirkier milestones, as well as a couple milestones that were like the not so fun milestones, (laughs) but but you have to go through anyway, we have to go through them. And so we've all, yeah, we, we've all been there. So we'll talk about that as well. So yeah. before we get in, we should mention that um, parents can sign up until June 1st of this year to get all of WeSchool's premium content for free. So you can find it in the App Store, and we'll talk a little bit more about that definitely before we close the show. But I just wanted to jump in and mention um, that we are offering that to our listeners. So they're yeah, premium- don't miss that because it's the premium. You get it forever, Yeah, right? Yes, like you, yeah, once you're a premium yeah. member, um, then you have that premium content forever. So up until June 1st, 2017. All right. Should we all jump in? All right. Let's do it. So, yeah. So this first segment is all about why and how to keep track of all this stuff. There's so babies change so much just in the first year. And of course, in you know the second and third year as well, that you really when you're in the middle of it, you, you sometimes don't even realize these milestones are happening and you definitely think you'll remember it. That's like such a universal feeling, don't you think? You're like, yeah. oh my gosh, she smiled today. I'm going to remember this moment forever. And but. you might remember that your baby smiled once. You may even remember kind of what it was like, but you probably won't, you know, necessarily remember when that happened or which baby looked like what if you have more than one. Yes. I know that's something for me. So it's kind of just becomes this amorphous memory of many babies all together. So, <laughs> yeah. So that, and let's talk about why. I mean, one thing that I think is really um, more, probably more of my motivator to, to track this stuff than even me wanting it is that my kids are interested. Yeah. Um, mine are always coming to me asking when they rolled over first or what word they said first. That's the big one. I yes. want to say like my kids always want to know what words they said first. And I have to admit that I don't always know. Well, it it becomes part of their story as they get older. I mean, I I have my baby book from that my mom kept and I'm a first child. So she probably like did the A plus job that, you know, children get in the baby books. Um, But it is there's something that this is pre memory. Once your kids are older and interacting with you and able to, you know, talk about those stories, then then that's one thing. But this is before they can remember. So having those little things written down um, is special. And I think it does kind of help fill in the gaps as our kids get older. So I totally agree. Our kids will appreciate it. I I also, for the why, I also um, kind of, I love seeing the ways that my infants carried through some of their personality traits and themes into the 
people they're becoming today. Do you, do you notice that with your kids? Like yeah. there's some, not every trait because some, sometimes they change, you know, a very, very shy or hesitant little toddler can be a very confident and outgoing big kid. But there are certain little things that I look back and I look at the pictures or the little notes I wrote down and I think, oh my gosh, that's this nine-year-old is the same as she was when she was six months old. So that's another kind of fun, yeah, that's, that's fun really reason fun. to write it down. Um, another reason I have thought of recently, actually, is when I'm talking to newer moms, um, the further I get away from like remembering the stuff off the top of my head, the more I think that I have sort of a skewed version of how things were. So I tend to think, you know, if I'm talking to a new mom or, or someone whose children are younger than mine, they might ask, when did your babies roll over? And what I remember is the one who rolled over crazy early. Sure. <laughs> you know, I just always had this, or I'll remember the one that was most notable, like right. the baby who learned how to walk by basically just getting up and walking across the yes. room, which usually doesn't happen. Right. So I think sometimes it's nice to actually even like to help out other moms or just to be more, I guess, realistic with yeah. actually what happened. It's nice to have access to that. And I was actually just cleaning up my, my computer is, was running super slowly and I decided just to do a complete wipe. And I really decided that this time I was going to go through, instead of doing a full restore of 8 million files that are on my computer, I went through and looked at every single file on my computer. So that took me the better part of an afternoon. Um, but what was really fun about it was finding all of these randomly titled video clips, mm. which I didn't have that many of and actually didn't even remember taking a lot of them. They must have been off really old, bad cell phone cameras. Right. Um, but I had this little collection for each kid of like little short videos that I took. And those easily could have just been lost on my desktop right. forever. And right. that I never really would have looked at them again because I didn't really know that I had them. So that I think that that, you know, is another reason to think about how to keep all this stuff together. As we have more and more and more digital files that we could potentially have, it's yes. nice to think about having them in a place where you can easily access them. Yeah. And there's so much, like you say, like our, our devices now, storage is hardly an issue anymore. I mean, for, you know, there's, there's a, an ability to have so many files, but um, I think what's fun when we get into talking more about the WeSchool app, especially, is that it really does sort of break it down into um, more specific bite-sized chunks. So, for example, in the as your baby meets the milestones, um, if you're recording it in the app, you can say, "Yes, my baby rolled over today," and it'll ask you, "Did this happen today? Last week?" I loved that there was an ability to put in a date that even was like a month or two ago. That's, That's awesome. totally me. I, I have a pretty yeah. good like short term memory and I can keep track of things. So if you got behind in your milestone keeping, you could be like, okay, well this really did actually happen six weeks ago, but you could put that in and then it'll prompt you. Do you have a video of this or a photo? So, and it's because it's only, you know, I think you said 117 milestones, but that's over three years. So right. it's really is a pretty, when you divide it up by month, it's a pretty manageable number of moments that it's prompting you to capture. So that doesn't mean you're not going to take 10 million other videos and photos. But I, as someone who gets overwhelmed by the potential to record everything and to make, yes. you know, unlimited number of keepsakes and photo books, I almost kind of like that it's a relatively limited number of key moments and milestones that you're prompted to remember. And then think how cool that would be after the first year, you, you know, you can export it, you can, it's just all right there in that sort of you know, logical progression. Cause there's not, a yeah, it's a logical progression when you're, right. when you're a new mom. <laughs> right. <laughs> Someone tell me what am I, what, what should I, what am down? I supposed to be looking for here? Yeah. Well, I mean, we've talked about like, I know, um, on the blog and I don't remember if we've ever talked about it on this podcast before, but Sarah, we definitely talked about it at the happiest home, the idea of like the last first, Mm -hmm. or the yeah. yeah so I think sometimes those there's especially when we talk about like the lesser known milestones which we'll get into a little bit more um, at the end of the episode it's like sometimes those just happen and you're not looking for them so everyone's waiting for their baby to roll over mm -hmm. everyone's waiting for their baby to crawl but really people aren't thinking about things like the first time your baby learned to like shove his fist in his own mouth yeah um and you know stuff like that that sometimes it just happens. And then suddenly you're like, wow, this has been happening for a while. How did that happen? You know, how did it get to the point where my baby's just doing this all the time? Um, and suddenly now it's like, you've lost the, the fact that you've lost track of the fact that it, it was a milestone that was met. So I love the idea of being able to go back and retroactively, you know, note that that happened. Totally. If maybe it happens a few times before you really realize it's happening. Yeah. And certain milestones, yeah. like, w yeah, we're going to talk more about our favorites, but certain ones are absolutely like they don't happen. And then all of a sudden they do, but others are a little more gradual. I mean, even those first social smiles, you're like, is it gas? Is it right? Violet used to smile in her sleep. I mean, all babies kind of smile oh, in yeah. their sleep, yeah. but she smiled in her sleep 
all the time. I mean, constantly these big from newborn from the day she was born. And, um, you know, and then I do have a picture of when she really first like smiled at me. And of course, there's like nothing on earth like that moment. It's so fun. Especially because that's usually when you are just about ready to like give up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your baby's just like a yeah. blob of yeah. needs. And, and then suddenly. Five they... weeks. Yeah, um, exactly. But yeah, some of those are a little more gradual. So just like you said, it, they creep up on you or you, and when it's your first baby, um, without, you know, apps like this that you and I didn't have necessarily, um, you don't even sometimes know that you're supposed to be looking for it or that you're like, Oh yeah, we are doing that. So yeah, that's really fun. Um, so I I love thinking about how this has changed over time, this idea of, um, you know, noting what our baby and our little kids are doing. Um, I think I had this romantic notion of like keeping a little journal and I must have started one, I don't know, five different times. I You know, especially when they started saying words, I wanted to write down, you know, because they, they acquire that language so quickly, you know, after that, I don't know, one year mark. And right. I just never stuck with any system. I'm curious if you, you know, I know you're not probably a super um, detailed journaler, but I yeah. I love how technology has supported this. And I, I wish I'd been a little bit better about writing down the little things myself. You know, that's so funny because I remember one of the, well, and I didn't have access to social media when my kids were, most of my kids were little. Um, it really wasn't a thing until Clara was born. But when I looked back, I one day just went in the way back machine, looked at all of my old tweets from yes. back when I was really into Twitter. And essentially it read like a baby book yes. for Clara and also like a funny quips place for Owen. I did a lot of just quick, like little clips and um, quotes and things like that, that were going on in my life. And, and right then my life was very focused on a baby and a, and a well, he was a toddler ish, I don't know, yeah. three and a half toddler and a preschooler. So I remember actually saying at one point to someone, like, I wish there was a Twitter just for like a Twitter like thing just for parenting, just for capturing those moments where like sometimes you just go type it or record it or in some way notate that it was happening um, and then it would be saved. So it wouldn't be saved along with all your political tweets (laughs) and like all this other stuff on some external um, platform, but it would all be saved in one place. So that's one thing I got really excited about with WeSchool is like that ability to just make, it doesn't have to be like a long, you know, a lot of people used to blog about their babies and they'd be like these long flowery posts and those are great, but like we don't always have time to do that either. Right. So I don't always have time to pull out a journal and write things out by hand um, that have to do with what my baby is doing that day. So I really like that that feature of being able to track something in one place easily. I agree. And I don't know about you, but for me, the photos, I while I was saying I wasn't very good about writing stuff down, I I do think I'm good about photos. We've talked in previous episodes. I'm pretty organized about my photos. I've always loved to take them. And that is such a great trigger for me. So I feel like my saving grace is that when I look back at the photos, which are all dated digitally, so they're, you know, I didn't have to date them myself. um, It will it will sort of trigger those memories and kind of anchor me in time and be like, okay, I, I remember kind of what was happening at that time. I remember that outfit. I remember where we lived. And that does, I mean, thank goodness goodness for that. So with our smartphones and the photos and the videos. Um, but yeah, I just think, I think sometimes when you're so busy and you're so in it, like we said, you think you're going to remember, or you think you won't, maybe you, maybe you don't think you're going to remember, but you don't know that you'll value that. You don't know that you'll care that you don't. <laughs> you know, right. when you go back and read like memoirs that are so, um, What's the one? It was it Shirley Jackson that you recommended to yes. me. They're so they're so detailed about very mm-hmm. um, ordinary daily life, life among the savages. I believe yes. it was called. Yeah, great book. I don't know how yeah. I, how we got there, but I guess my point is <laughs> there's there's something really beautiful about like the the ordinary daily stuff. But when you're in yeah. it, you don't think to make a note of that because so, it's ordinary. I mean, I think, and you know, and you get in the point where it's like, I'll have another day tomorrow. Like I'll have, right. you know, this, this day will happen again and this day will happen again and again and again. So There's, yeah, um, when you're really in it, it just feels like it's never going to end. So no, yeah. I think anything that gives a little structure or a little prompting. Um, yeah. to keep these memories. Um, it just, there's, it's so special to look back on even five, you know, even five years. I also was going through some old videos recently. I was getting everything up into, um, Google photos into the cloud and, um, some videos of Reed talking. He was a like absurdly early talker. And, um, mm-hmm. so these videos of him at less than two. It was probably between 18 months and two that he went from like, oh yeah, he says words like a normal toddler to like people stopping me in the grocery store and being like, 
<laughs> why does your baby? Uh, why is your, your baby talking? Is like super five. articulate, by the yeah. way. <laughs> yes. It was right between about eighteen months and two that that really became apparent. So I just have all of these videos, you know. And his voice was babyish, and his pronunciation was still a little babyish. But the the way he was putting sentences together at like twenty right. months was it's hilarious. And yeah, there's yeah. just and that's only been four years, you know. So yeah. um, it doesn't take very much distance to really appreciate whatever you did to, to, to note those things down. So whether, you know, whether it's pen and paper journal or an app like we school, or just being regular about your photos and videos, you will be so, you'll be so happy you did. Yeah. Isaac was one of those kids who was like super early um, articulate talker. And I've been, I joke about it that it was like, he didn't say anything. And then one day it was like, hello, mother. (laughs) Watch him having for dinner. Like I always think of him as having like a little British accent for some reason, or he's sounding like he's in an old movie. Um, and for me, the only one I can remember, which bums me out, because the the only thing I can actually remember him saying was when I never taught him a code word for breastfeeding. <laughs> And because I didn't think I would need to. Right. And then literally one day he's, we're in the grocery store store and he just looks at me in this, he had a very deep voice yeah. and he says in just perfect English, like, mom, I would like to nurse now. And he said, <laughs> it like, and, and he was really little, but just big enough that people were starting to think that was a little weird. Right. And he said it with utter clarity and he was like the most articulate toddler. And it was super embarrassing because <laughs> I wasn't prepared to field that question in that, in that circumstance. So I'm sure there's a million of those that funny little stories about him. Um, and that's the only one I can ever remember. So when I'm trying to tell people, it's like, I don't know. I wish I had another one. That is really funny. Yeah. You, yeah. With Isaac, you wouldn't have had like the video camera in your pocket, which is. No, I didn't have it. Yeah. So now it does. My you know. favorite videos are of the talking because it's, and that's another one, the talking and the verbal development is one where you're in the phase. So you understand your kid, whether they're saying one word or putting little, you know, sign language. And then six months later, they're putting two and three words together. But it's not until you look back that it's so dang cute. I mean, it is cute at the time, but um, it's when you have a a child speaking in full sentences that you listen back. Um, Oh my gosh, those are so cute. Well, I wanted to mention a couple other features of the We Schools journal that just really stood out to us as we got to know them. Um, One thing I love is that because it's milestone based and the milestones are based on research on child development, as you kind of mark off these milestones, um, the play plans that they suggest, the little ideas and songs for engaging with your baby and communicating with your baby um, will be recommended based on the milestones you're still working on. So I've had kids who were really pretty early on the social milestones and quite a bit later on, say, gross motor. So I would have really appreciated this, especially with Allegra. She was um, really alert and, you know, smiled and looked at us and, you know, really had all of those social cues down. But she hated tummy time, hated Mm -hmm. anything where she had to kind of push up on her arms. Um, Once she rolled over from her tummy to her back, she literally never spent any time on her tummy because she didn't like it. And it wasn't like I could even encourage her force her really because she knew how to flip over that way Um, right but I would have really I think gotten benefit out of some of the suggestions for it's not that she was so behind that we required special services but she probably would have had more fun um learning to crawl and scoot and she really just didn't because I I didn't really know how to encourage her. She didn't want to spend any time on her tummy, and eventually she walked. But um, I can see how that would be really helpful. So as you mark off your milestones and keep your little journal for your baby's milestones, the ideas for um, playing and games and activities with your baby um, can be applied toward the ones that they haven't met or that they're not meeting. And there's also some great information in the app about what to do if your baby isn't meeting the milestones that they're supposed to. So it's all sort of coordinated based on what you're actually experiencing, but then also, you know, what's, what's coming up or what your baby maybe has not experienced yet. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, Another thing that I thought was, that I thought was really cool is the, there is a toy store within the, within the app. Yes. Correct. So Mm -hmm. what's cool about that is, you know, you, you sit there, especially when you're buying toys for a baby, like, what are you going to get this baby? That's going to be the 
they, they all just look the same <laughs> right. kind of to me, all those developmental baby toys. And it's hard to figure out which one's right for which age. And they often give such a wide range of ages. Like this toy is good for babies six to 18 months. Well, that's a pretty, that's a pretty big age range. So what I really think is cool about that is that there it's a more specific and I guess kind of scaled down version of what you're going to run into if you just go to the toy store yes. and are wandering around looking for something that is a good gift or a good thing to introduce to your baby at the next stage. Yes, absolutely. I agree. Um, yeah, it's just all really well coordinated um, to kind of support what we want to be doing anyway. Um, you know, moms have been doing this forever without apps. But what I think is nice about what's available to us digitally now is we don't we don't always have the village that moms once did. Mm-hmm. You know, our, we're not all raising babies right next to our sister who's also raising babies and maybe is right. a little bit ahead of us. And our mom isn't down the street to tell us what age we were when we first crawled, you know. So I do think that um, that's that's a loss in some ways, I think. But um, what what we have now is this sort of in our pocket, literally um, the ability to get educated and have suggestions. Cause you know, playing with your babies should be fun and natural. And I think it is, but I, I think if you haven't had, like if you haven't been around a lot of other moms and babies, it's hard to know what to do. When you don't always know how to do it. Yeah. Gold, you know, like how right. to play with Absolutely. a baby who doesn't do anything, but um, right. those, so those songs and the music that's built right in that you can download from the app is all just, I think very well researched and well coordinated. Moms are lucky nowadays. You guys have a lot of cool stuff to play with. I and I'm excited that. to have this I one. I think about that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> like if only um, we'd have this stuff. Sweet. So should we launch into talking about our favorite baby yes, milestones? I think we okay. it's going to be fun. But before we do, just a reminder, I said it at the top um, that you can sign up until June 1st, 2017 um, to get all of We School's premium content for free. So you basically download the app, you sign up. And then when it asks you if you'd like to become a premium member, you just say yes. And it is free to you and until June 1st. So um, go go to the we'll app store now. and go get the to the app store and <laughs> check it out. Um, so should we go back and forth on the milestones? Because I know we both have a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, yeah. So um, if you missed us saying this at the top, we, we each picked three or four baby milestones that most of them are a little off the beaten path, I'd say. Like maybe yeah. not the ones that are first in the books you read. Um, and we each also picked one that was not our favorite, but that you got to get right. through anyway. So, okay, why don't you go first, Megan? <laughs> okay, I'll go first. So I was just reminded of this the other day because I spent some time with a newborn and it was super exciting. My friend Elena had a baby um, and he was so sweet. And it's funny how you forget, Mm -hmm. you know, you forget about stuff. And so he's like two weeks old. So he's still at that age where he has like no control over his hands. And so he's always smacking himself in the face or scratching himself. And I remember really loving that milestone where they can finally like get their fist in their mouth on Mm -hmm. purpose or they can just control their hands. So they're not you know, messing themselves up or like, yes. like the flailing. That was one of my favorites. Um, especially if you have a baby who is soothed by that, yes. none of mine really were big f- thumb suckers. But if your baby takes a pacifier, that's the first step to them being able to put the pacifier yes. back in their mouths too, which I know is a big deal, uh, especially on car rides and naps yes. and things like that. So, um, yeah, that was one of the ones I thought of while holding little baby Theo the other day, watching him smack himself. Yes. And repeatedly scratch, <laughs> and scratch yeah. themselves oh yes. my gosh we one of my first er visits with any of my kids was reed scratched his own eyeball um oh and it was enough that we they they made us go to the er because we were out of town and they they said he's so little you can't just go to urgent care and he was fine but they did have to get him give him antibiotic drops because his oh yeah i know and he was like a month old and um, at least my babies have those like six i want to say like six weeks ish pictures yeah. or maybe Four weeks where like their all their whole face is just a mess because they keep it's like that's when they get really serious about scratching themselves yes. like up until then it's kind of random but like they it's like they're trying yeah, so hard I think to they do are. something I think they're trying to get their hand probably in their mouth or right. and just, just failing. <laughs> so it's so sad I know and you want to go around and tell people like I swear I'm not beating my baby up yeah. or like scratching his face he's doing that to himself awesome. <laughs> so. those little tiny nails are so sharp oh, okay, you know. well, that's a good one hand control see you forget you forget that babies oh. come out not even being able to control their own hands they're just flailing mess at that point okay <laughs> well my first point. one is kind of similar to that only with the other digits and that is i love when babies discover their toes and start putting oh. their own toes in their mouth it sounds gross for any other age but when you're like a squeaky clean 
I think yeah. my babies were all about four or five months, maybe. And they had the coordination to reach down there. And you know how flexible they are. So they yeah. just like, pull their entire like bottom half up in the air and like suck on their toes. I don't know why it's just so cute because they it's very cute. It's they like look a like toy. animals. Yeah. Yeah. And it is like yeah. they, they could do it. I mean, they could just play with their own toes for ever. It's like nature's nature's baby toy. So <laughs> it, is, and, it is very cute. And I agree. Like when they're squeaky clean, I mean, their toes are just as clean as their fingers at that oh, point. Totally. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, I, I just feel like it's a great photo op, you know, I feel like everyone oh. has a picture of their baby. Sucking on their toes. <laughs> toes. Yeah, but all these babies love growing up and looking at those pictures. I'm sure. Totally. <laughs> um, so my next one is when your baby starts recognizing your own voice, like you're specifically like mom's voice or dad's voice. And you're not sure, like the first couple of times they'll kind of turn toward you when you're talking and you, you can tell they're preferring you to someone else. Right. And that's one of those sort of like we were talking about earlier with how sometimes the, the, the um, milestone's a little nebulous, like you aren't sure it happened. Yeah. Until it's happened like five times. Yeah. And then, yes, she's totally doing that or he's totally doing that. So that was always a favorite for me because, you know, like you spend a lot of time parenting a newborn who doesn't really acknowledge you and they, yeah. you're just a milk machine or you're just there to change diapers or whatever. And then suddenly it's like now you're you're kind of getting a, a like a VIP status yes. in their eyes. And that feels so good. And you need that. You need to be recognized by that point. There's like, a biological look. reason they start to smile at you and be cute, you know, <laughs> around six weeks or whatever. No, that's so true. And I, I never thought about it until you brought it up. But there's probably a lot that is the head and neck coordination because we know that babies recognize our voices even in the womb. But the ability to kind of like engage and turn their head and look and tell us with their little eyes that they prefer us is, you know, you have to have both the physical strength and the recognition all coming together, which just makes it so cute. And special. I love it. I remember with Violet being the youngest, I, I have a very distinct memory of when she started doing that with the with her brother and sister who were little, but she'd hear their voices coming down the stairs or after school or something, and her whole face would just light up, which is also very cute. Yeah. Um, okay, well, this was one that I thought of, and it's not necessarily like a super fun, but it's also not my not fun milestone. That's still to come. But this <laughs> is, um, you forget, prepare yeah, prepare yourself. You forget that babies cry without tears for the first little while. And there's something about those oh, first yeah. when they when they really do start crying with tears. And I admit, I had to look this up because I wasn't so sure when this, the, um, what I looked up said three to 12 weeks, which is a big range. Um, I remember it definitely toward the end of that. Like I remember. Yeah, I thought, I thought that was for like a four month. Yeah, that's, that's what I remember. And maybe it's kind of start slow. Like maybe they have yeah. little moist tears in their tear ducts. But I'm talking about like the big fat crocodile tears. And down you, their face. Yes. And you get so used to babies crying without tears. It's like a normal part of infancy. And then when they do have those big fat tears, it just seems that much more sad. Well, because when there's crying without tears and, you know, new words have that cry that sounds so like fakey almost. It doesn't. Yeah start to kind of see it as more like yelling it's like a bodily <laughs> like, function kind of yeah, the baby's just yell, like you know yelling at you they don't have a lot of control over it. it's like it's just happening it's like right. again it's like that biological imperative just like wah, wah. and then suddenly they're crying and you're saying oh, so you're sad then i mean it yeah. just it is different it make it totally i remember like watching my babies when when they had big tears rolling down their faces and being like oh my gosh this is the saddest thing <laughs> i ever saw it so, is it is yeah. so that was yeah um i again this what i looked up just now said three to 12 weeks but my memory is definitely toward the end of that more like three or four months so I bet the tears are little in the beginning <laughs> you're probably right um so another one that I really re and then this is again another one that I would not notice it until it was happening like until yeah. I was in it and so it's when babies kind of lose like they get that trunk strength so that they can do two things in particular. One is sitting up in a shopping cart. I remember that being a big deal with all of my kids. Like sometimes you try it a couple times before they were really ready. You'd have them all yes, propped up. Totally. I totally did that. Most. And then you'd be like, no, nope, this isn't working. But then there's that one day they can actually do it. They can yeah. actually just sit up and you don't have to cart in the baby seat or find one of the mm -hmm. carts that has the baby seat connected. And those are always the worst because then you can't really get into the shopping cart that easily. Yeah. The, um, you have no room yeah. for anything. Yeah. Right, exactly. But I always also thought it was really fun to have like a sitting up baby. Like I remember shopping and I have this really, um, I had this really clear memory actually of doing this with all the babies, but where you'd like be, you know, I'd kind of lean in while I was going and people probably were staring at me like I was crazy, but like I'm kind of leaning in 
pushing the cart down and like kind of going for a kiss. Right. And so yes. it's just a lot easier to do when they can sit up and they're also a little bit bigger so they can enjoy it as they're well. So they're so happy. I feel yeah, like. So yeah. Happy. yeah. It's like now they don't have to lay down and try it. Cause you can tell when they really want to be sitting up, they start craning their necks. Yes. They're trying to see more, but they can't quite support themselves yet. Um, and then when they can do that, that's also when they can start sitting on your hip, yeah. like a baby on the hip, which makes life easier. You know that I think I feel like that was about a six month thing. Yeah, my, I had early Allegra and Reed sat up uh, much earlier and then Violet was the opposite. So my Allegra sat up right at five months, but that's early and she was yeah. solid. And Reed was probably between five and six months. And then Violet was the opposite with she was the one who liked to be on her tummy because she could she figured out army crawling and scooting much yeah. earlier so she had the opposite she was less inclined to want to sit because she knew how to move so isn't that right. so, so true of her personality yeah. now like Very never much, stops yes. moving makes, um, makes so she was over seven months when she was sitting independently and I do remember that because it was so different you know my three kids tracked similar in a lot of ways but that one was super different I was like sit up I just wanted to be able to just like sit, plop her Right. Exactly. She, yeah. yeah. So that is one of those like that second, you know, half of the first year things that just yeah. suddenly frees you up to like just to hold the baby differently and to be a yes. little more casual with the yes. baby and stuff. And it just I remember that being kind of a big deal. It was it was always kind of a relief, but also one of those things I could miss if I wasn't paying really yeah. close attention because it happens gradually. Yeah. And I, I mean, even going back, I mean, because I was thinking more of like totally independent sitting, but I'm even thinking of, you know, when a baby's about three or four months and you can do this thing where they want to face outward like you're holding them you're still supporting them a lot you might be supporting them under their bottom or kind of like under their crotch almost but their he their head and neck is stable enough that they like to look around yeah, they can look out yeah and, and that's and that's even much younger because they don't have to be sitting yet so i think every time that they get that milestone where they get to engage a little differently in the world is they're so happy you know yeah it's really totally. fun i agree Okay, well, my next one is um, first giggles. And the I have a little backstory on this, which is why, I mean, I think it's it's a pretty cliche. I mean, there's nothing like a baby's first belly laugh where they're really laughing. And, you know, you can tickle them, but that's a little more involuntary. I'm talking about when they really just crack up at something. And um, going back to the whole thing about our kids having the same personality as they did when they were infants, Allegra was a very serious baby you know she smiled enough at the developmentally appropriate time that you know I, I could mark it off the I would check it off in we school if I had had weed school we school but she didn't smile a lot and she only smiled at Brian and I she didn't really engage with other people very you know she was very hesitant and then um, she didn't laugh very much I remember trying so hard to get her to laugh and she would and Reed was the opposite so I have this memory of him being I want to say like just over two months, so probably like nine or ten weeks. And, you know, he'd been smiling for several weeks, but just getting him to belly laugh. And I, I mean, if you could bottle that, seriously, if you could bottle yes. that sound, we would have world peace. I'm not kidding. Like, <laughs> so I think you're right, actually. Not just, my, have... not just my baby's laugh, any baby's did, laugh. Did any of your babies ever laugh in their sleep? <laughs> I probably, I don't know. I remember, I don't remember who it was now, and I wish I could remember, but that was for sure something that one or two of my babies would do every now and then, and it was the cutest thing ever because it's still that, <laughs> you know, like that, yes. that baby, you know, Giggle. chortle, like yes, that belly laugh. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And the younger the they are, the more almost magical it seems because they, yes. they're not they're not communicating with you very much yet. So the fact that they think something's funny is actually like a really sophisticated social milestone if you think about it like a sense of humor is is a sophisticated thing to have so to have a two or three month old belly laughing i just remember feeling like i kind of won the lottery because my first yeah. baby was this much more she was like that wide-eyed serious you know and so she just you know and she still is in many ways um and he just cracked up at stuff um, that's so, so funny yeah it was a cute one so my next one um it's kind of one of those ones that's really, really cute, but can also be a little bit annoying. And that is when you're when you're having have a nursing baby and probably bottle feeding babies do this as well. But I think with nursing babies, it's a little more awkward. Um, and that's when they start to get distracted by everything. So yes. they're like trying to crane their heads around. Yes. And taking your entire nipple and yeah. boob with them or, or they're deep. like uh -huh. <laughs> they're like sticking their hand in your cleavage. That's another thing I remember. Um nursing babies doing like they want to pat it's, it can be very sweet too it's like they suddenly they go from just kind of laying there nursing to suddenly being like looking around looking at you sticking their toes in your nose like all this all of a sudden their bodies just engage and I feel like it's one of those things it doesn't really happen suddenly but it seems like you go from nursing being pretty just 
kind of like passive. Yeah. It's like yes. all that they're really engaging is their mouth for yes. a while. And then yes. suddenly like their entire, it's like a full body experience. And so, you know, when that would, by the end of the first year, sometimes be like, okay, you know, enough. Yeah. <laughs> enough. Let's just get through this feeding. But at the same time, I did think it was awfully cute. It is cute. And sometimes they smile at you while they like, yes, you look while up they're, and they're totally and like, milk is, like running down their chin. Yeah. Yeah. Or they'll pull off. That was always, um, I feel like, right. Cause that probably all starts what five months or so four or five months when they start getting more active. And I, I also felt like there was a phase I, I, maybe with all of them or maybe just the first time because I took everything more seriously but where I actually really tried to plan my nursing sessions for a more quiet like at home if I could and yeah. it was, I would still feed on the go if I if I had to obviously but I started to think more about okay let me feed her before we leave because she just was so distracted and I think she hadn't started solid foods yet or anything so in my mind I was like well we need to you know take this seriously and actually finish a feeding but I right. think p- part of that was my you know me but they would right. pull off and kind of unlatch and look around spray milk everywhere go back yeah. and have another yep, little yep, snack yep. It's, a, it's a much less like you said okay here we're gonna sit down and do this for 25 minutes or whatever it's a it's a much more kind of dynamic process after all exactly. that is really cute really cute um, okay, well, I'm going to move on to one that is not so fun, but that okay. I feel like all of my babies went through this milestone. And that is, um, they all had a very specific point where they stopped napping anywhere on the go. So, you know, I had the car seat, like the bucket that you could sling over your elbow and you'd carry it into wherever you were going or carry them into the house if they were still sleeping and they'd maybe fall asleep in the car, maybe not, but it wasn't, um, they, I was, they were able to nap wherever we were or I'd be wearing them and they'd fall asleep. And it just didn't seem to be an issue. I wasn't, um, with, with, first few months babies I wasn't keeping track of nap schedules or anything like that and right. they would reach a point and it just seemed like it would be over the course of a week or two and the first thing I would notice is that they were so grumpy during the day and then I started putting two and two together and realizing they weren't staying asleep in the car mm-hmm. or in those transfers or um, you know even noise like they, often they'll sleep through noise for the first few months and then they they reach that point where they're more aware more awake and more alert and I, I there would always be that aha where I'd be like oh you have oh, napped for right. more than 10 minutes all day and maybe they'd had like 10 10 minute naps and so it was always kind of a, a wake-up call for me haha pun intended oh. I had to be like okay well I'm probably not ready to go to a strict two naps a day schedule because my my babies just took much longer to get there. But I did start to be a little bit more careful about making sure they had maybe one nap in the morning where we tried to stay home. And it was always a little bit of a buzzkill because it was there's a certain amount of freedom in just being able to take sling your newborn wherever you go yes. and not worry about and, and knowing they'll schedule. sleep when they have to sleep. Exactly. And, yeah. And, yep. I, and I just, I always remember it with the grumpiness first and thinking, gosh, what, what is going on? And it's like, Oh man, you've been awake for like five hours straight and you're not supposed to do that when you're four months old, like, <laughs> but it's yeah. because you keep getting woken up or just dozing right. off and then we get somewhere. And so, um, I'm sure all babies are different. I just always remember that, but somehow somewhere between four and five months being like, Oh yeah. Okay. We can't do that anymore. Yeah, I, I just was reminded of that the other day, holding that newborn when we were passing the newborn from person to person and the sleep wasn't even interrupted. It was like, no. it just was like one solid sleep state. Yeah. At one point we, someone had to, I don't know, like take their watch off or something and just put the baby on the counter and he <laughs> stayed asleep. He just like, it was just, we have this really funny picture of him like surrounded by chip dip and stuff like oh on the gosh. counter, just snoozing. And I thought that I can't remember exactly when that ends, but yeah. it, it definitely ends. And I want to say for me, it was the same as you, like three, four or five months, something yeah. like that. Um, but yeah, that's a not, not so fun it's one. Not so fun because it changes the way you have to kind of think about your exactly yeah and I'll I'll share my last not so fun one which is you know (laughs) kind of short and to the point and that is when they have they go from you know soft like kind of still gross blowout kind of poop to like grown up poop (laughs) and that is exactly that is also a gradual thing it doesn't happen overnight they add more solids and slowly it just starts to turn and then one day you're like man it's like you're an old man yeah and then you know it's just it's like changing you know my own diaper i don't know that's gross but i'm just saying like this is just not fun um and that i never i never decided that was fun that was one of those i was like oh it's kind of cute nope wasn't cute it just was it was just kind of gross and it lasts a long time yeah have you had to go back and change like one year 
year old poopy diapers since being since Clara being out of diapers. I mean, yes. Like, and when it's not your baby, it's especially really when you've been out for a while, like out of it for a bit, you're like, holy cow, how do you do this? And when it's your baby, you just get used to it. You don't really think about it. It's just a fact of life, right? It's just reality. But when you're doing it kind of like cold yeah <laughs> out of not having done it for a while also not being your child yeah. and you're just like this is really nasty and you can't believe that you did that for you know so in long our cases like almost decades of time without interruption yeah. if you had overlapping babies like how, i know yep how did i do this yeah I, right yeah that's happened to me too where i'm like oh whoa this is whoa. yeah yeah that's funny Oh my goodness. Well, that was really fun. I feel like I want to hold a baby now and I get to actually, um, I also get to go visit a newborn by the time this airs. Actually, I will have already visited my newborn. Yeah. Um, well, I thought we can finish by just maybe a few more thoughts about milestones in general. And, um, one thing I do want to talk about is your pediatrician well visits and the checklist that they give you, I think those can be a little um, overwhelming for new moms. And I think that's why something like We School that educates you on, you know, why these milestones matter and what you can do. I I feel like my pediatrician had these, all the well visits, it was just the nurse would come in, do the vitals or whatever they do, like weigh and measure. And then she'd leave me with this very uninspired blue sheet of paper. And it was a different set of things for each age. And, you know, I, my babies were, other than the gross motor that my kids were always a little on the later side for crawling and walking, but most of the things I didn't have any major concerns. So they were either meeting them or almost meeting them, but I never felt like there was a lot of connection between what my pediatrician did and said when they were in there and that silly checklist. And I think if you had a kid who was behind in some areas, or if you just really were, you know, a little overwhelmed or a little worried by nature, it can be, um, it can be a little, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if worrying is not the right word, it's, but it's, not it's just helpful. not helpful. It's not right. helpful to have a checklist when you spend 24 seven loving this little creature and you believe that they are perfectly on track for who they are. Right. And then you get a blue checklist and you're like, well, I, I guess not roll over from her. Man, this baby's really tummy. not measuring up. Yeah, And then I guess <laughs> yeah. what I would have loved probably as a newer mom is some context and some more of the human side for the pediatrician to say, okay, well, you know, tell me about your baby. Like what's, you know, yeah. what are they doing lately? And the more, um, the more kind of softer human side of these milestones rather than yes. just the checklist. So, well, and, want to mention and that. really part of, isn't, don't you feel like part of, you know, you go to the pediatrician to make sure your baby's healthy and all yeah. that stuff. But don't you also feel like you kind of, anyone who's in your baby's life as an expert figure at mm-hmm. that time, you want them to sort of celebrate your baby. Yes. too. That's part of why you're there in the first place. Yeah. Like, oh, how fun. We get to go to the doctor and I get to talk about all the stuff that you did yeah. this week or this month. And um, and then and then he or she gets to tell me like what that means and like what to look for. It's fun. It should be fun and exciting. And I, yeah. I think that it often isn't. And also books and articles sometimes aren't because they're not really humanized in that way. And so that's one thing I do like about this very, like you said, a softer, more human. It's a celebration of what your baby's doing, not like a criticism of what your baby's doing or yes. an analysis of what your baby should be doing yeah so yeah I agree and I I think moms new moms should know if nobody's told you you know your baby probably better than anybody else so the checklists and the books and the articles should be taken in the context of what you already know about your baby and you don't have to be a child development expert you have the knowledge you have more knowledge than anything else and I think that's what sometimes unfortunately those sort of cold clinical checklists can take away is making moms sort of doubt what they know about their baby. And now the other side of this is um, as, as modern medicine has developed, pediatricians have been able to screen for things that you can get intervention for early on, which is great. great. So we know that, but um, I just want new moms, especially to just not lose sight of the fact that everything you're doing to play and engage and connect with your baby all day, every day is is as valuable as whatever clinical background is behind them. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And then that, you know, I guess to kind of put a point on that, like that's one of the things I really like about this app is that 
it is helpful in that you have something you can do. So instead of just saying, well, your baby's you know, supposed to be here. They're not quite there yet. Keep an eye on it. That doesn't feel really very active. Right. right? And if there's not a real problem and so you're not seeking intervention, but you still want to kind of nudge them along in this sure. way, mm-hmm. I like the idea of having that play plan. Yes. So it's like, well, this is something I can focus on right now. And, and maybe it's going to help me feel a little bit better, a little more proactive, yeah. I guess, about what I'm doing yeah. um, between now and that next pediatrician visit. Yes, I agree. I love that. Um, another thing, and I think I've probably mentioned this on another show, I feel, but I'll repeat it anyway, is that if you're fortunate enough to be around, whether it's through a mom's group or just through people you know, to be in real life, not on the internet, but in real life around as much of a wide variety of moms and babies as possible, I think that is a great antidote to some of this worry and comparison we feel when we read anonymous, not anonymous, but, you know, sort of removed articles right. online. Um, I just was really lucky in that way. And in my little play group of babies, there was such a wide range of normal on all of these milestones. Um, and I didn't know at the time how much that was benefiting me. But looking back, you know, we had in our little group, and I'm still friends with the moms, we had a 10 month walker, like walking, 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 not just toddling around. But and we had, you know, my kids were always the end of that spectrum, like 15 month walkers. We had kids getting teeth at four months. We had a yeah. Yeah. baby who didn't get teeth till after his first birthday. We had, um, you know, we had later on, we had kids who needed support with speech. We had kids who read at age three. We had kids right. who like, <laughs> yeah. and so um, I think what's so different about seeing that in person is you're seeing moms who are doing mostly the same thing. You're seeing little siblings come along who may be totally different. And the more you experience that rich variety in real life, the more you know that you, you know, it's just variety is so normal. There's such a wide range of normal and every single book will tell you there's a wide range of normal, but for some reason you still focus on like the early end. So like my baby, you know, isn't crawling and they're nine months and you focus on that because it says six to nine months or whatever, you know, but it's something about seeing it with your own eyes and, and really appreciating those babies and kids for all of their, Variety. Seeing it as a real human baby, yes, <laughs> um, and or child who's still, doing it, yes, and so I just I feel really lucky that that was my experience, and it's not everybody's experience, but um, just just setting yourself up with that village if possible, or or taking the time to notice when you are around other babies, um, I think is such a great antidote to what happens when we feel alone and we're staring at our computers and googling things. <laughs> yeah. Totally agreed. Well, I think that's a good place to kind of, I don't know, wrap up this yeah. part of the conversation. And um, again, we want to definitely mention We School, who is our sponsor for this episode. You can go up until June 1st, 2017. You can become a charter member. So you get a free premium membership and that's lifetime access. So you yes. sign up once, you become a premium member, and then you'll get the content and features forever. Forever. And you can head right to wherever you download apps to find We School. But then, as always, um, head to themomhour.com. And this was episode 92. So when you find the show notes, we will, of course, link to them. There's also a really cute video that kind of showcases the app and how to use it. So we'll put a few more fun resources right in the show notes for our show, which will be at themomhour.com. And then just look for episode 92. And I would actually love to hear from people about their ba- their favorite uh, baby milestones, too. Yeah. So leave us a comment with that. That would make me very happy. Or what I'm your starting baby's, to forget. I know. Or what your baby's <laughs> doing right now. You or know, that. That's like, yeah. what's, yeah, what's next? Because we don't have those little ones. I know. All right. Well, this has been fun. Thanks, everybody. We will be back next week. <laughs> <laughs>